Hey guys, welcome to the episode of Fishing with the Captain. As you can see, we're not in the water today, but we will be playing with some lures, and in particular, this guy right here, 8 inch mag draft, one of my all time favorites. Um, gonna be chopping into it and um, adding some weight to it. Now, the benefit of that is I've been running some chin weights off the front, and in actual fact, any lure, and I've just been absolutely paranoid because it's just I've been let down so many times, been broken off, or the lure getting fouled up around the um, chin weight um, and you know on the hook set and then popping lines and stuff like that so or even um, just after fishing it for a little bit and getting a bit of chafe from the um, the twist lock um, or the split ring whatever it is or even having a line get caught in the split ring underneath and the chin weight has actually worked its way in so without further ado I'm just going to um, walk you through the steps and the tools that's needed to get the job done I'm um, going to be running it through on this white back shad 8 inch mega bass mag draft. So let's get to it. So, tools to get started. Well, just quickly show you how I do label them. I've, these are ones I've done before, um, but we'll go through it again. Actually, this has been a bit of a war veteran. Uh, I think this one's got close to 40 fish on it now. Um, and yeah, just if I hold it up to light, you can actually see the internal weight a little bit there just see it but it'll look a lot better when this is uh when we do this one now but what i want to do is you need to start off just get yourself a razor if you've got a sharp little scalpel sort of situation but a nice clean new razor not a, a used one definitely want to try and keep it clean or unless you keep it dedicated for um modifying your lures but definitely a sharp blade um just a lighter long nose pliers um and Get the weights themselves. Now the weights themselves are going to be putting in, um, this is a size 2 bean sinker. Look, I carry 2's, 3's, 2, 3's um, two, and 1's, um, just all different weights. So size 3 is point, um, 0.75 of an ounce. Um, I weigh all mine up, so I try and um, weigh them all up, but also you got to think when um, what I've done already is uh, put the bean sinker in a set of pliers, like act it like a vise, and get the uh, angle grinder and just run a slit through it. See, so I've gone about just past halfway. You can go a little bit more if you wanted to, but just about halfway. Uh, brand new at the packet. It's actually 22 grams. So I've already just from using the grinder, I've already taken three grams off. Not a huge deal when you're adding a lot more weight, but if you're working very specific um, like with the lighter weights well then it will have a big effect but when you're trying to add weight as much as you can so one maybe two ounces well three grams isn't going to be too much of a influence on what we're getting done here okay, for start, let's get this brand new lure out the pack now I do keep uh, the original plastic that's what helps keep them stored in their shape but see I keep them all and keep them stored in their plastic casings and that way you can actually label them as well and also go, I'll go through the hook configuration on the top as well so I'll show you the complete setup ready to fish so first thing first pop this gut packet and I also chose a clear one or well, the white back shad in particular, just so I can show you a bit more what's going on the inside. So, all right. So what we're going to do, what you could really do, is take the uh, take the hook off if it's in your way. But I'm happy like this. So what I want to do is what we want to do is pretty much take that um, harness inside. Uh, want to take it out. So you see, there's a bit of a center line here, like a seam. So we want to run our line pretty much from that point there that that eye there run it down to pretty much past the magnet section so just in there you might just do it nice and slow you get better as you go along and then you just want to get your nails in behind and separate that magnet and you see that little lead weight in there you might have to get the knife in there again but just to pry it open so there just dig your thumb underneath and what you want to do is you want to grab that section there and pull it down on an angle like that. Don't pull it back or out like that because you'll end up ripping it, which is it's fixable, but it's just, yeah. 
rather not. And then what you would, the eye the start, should start coming out. It'll just release, just like that. It started to come out. I'm squeezing with my left thumbs as well, just to keep the lure intact. Otherwise, it will just cave in. But now we have just the all plastic. But as you can see, it's it's really good that this is all one piece of wire as well, so it can stand up to a bit. Uh, what we're gonna do? We're just pretty much gonna take. Look, the magnet might fall out in the process, but don't stress. But we do want to get rid of that. So what we're gonna do is. Whatever tool you can use, just a bit of side cutter action or something, just to cut it out. Not only if you heat it up, it'll just drop off. Yeah. Okay, so we've taken the, uh, the lead bit off. Now what we're gonna do, just put it back in there, in the same place, back out the front as it would, as it was. Now you just want to sort of see how that sits in there. And then what you want to do is the purpose of having it three quarters of the way grinded through is you want it to sit, if, imagine if you can see a, a line across through the guts, right? A line through the middle. You want the lead to be on the bottom half or most of the lead. You don't want it up there. You don't want it in the middle. You want it down as low as you can. So that way it acts like a keel and it won't blow the lure out when you're winding it back. Often when I'm fishing and I'm burning it back to the boat, it sits true. It hasn't blown out. So what I want to do is grab that harness out now. Okay, so what we're going to do, now that we've got that, the wire and the sinker, just going to slide that up and over. Up inside, pretty much acting like a giant split shot. All right, so we're actually what we're going to do. Yeah, that's right. You can put it for top down, top down, bottom up, whatever. But I prefer to go top down, so the weight is always pushing down like that. Because if you have it like that, and then for whatever reason, seam opens or something, the sinker can just fall off, which it shouldn't, but just in case. So I like to go top down, top down and what we're going to do is just uh, give it a light crimp with the pliers. A light crimp with the pliers. Again, trying to keep it, don't want it in the middle of the sinker. You want the sinker sort of just up a bit. Now the ideal part would be having a nice flat file, but I don't have one on me. So what I want to do is just round off those edges. Take off any burrs. Just make it nice and tidy on the, the open side. So this part that we did the slot on. Just rounding it out. Doesn't have to be too fancy, but always helps. You see it's obviously it's like a little bit dinged and stuff from the hammering but it's just pretty well flat smooth there's no jagged edges or anything like that don't matter too much but now that's our weight crimped onto our harness so what we're going to do is just grab that put it back in i'm doing it a lot slower now but obviously i'll be doing it a lot quicker normally but see it sort of doesn't want to fit that's all right so what we see how much it's sticking out, it won't go in. So what we're gonna do, get the razor blade again. Open it up, it's only about 10, 15 mil deep at the most. So, but what we're gonna do here, is just open it up with the fingers and just pretty much where the hook section is, just gonna run the blade up, pretty much like it's if you wanted to fillet a fish. Pretty much until about halfway of the lure, depth wise. Yeah, that's open right up. Then we put this in. It should nearly be all the way in. See, it wants to tuck in there now. Starting to take shape. 
And you might think, oh, it's bulging and it won't, it won't close, but this is what the next bit comes. All right, so what we're going to do, oop, get a set of long nose pliers. Long nose. I'm just going to heat that up. Better is on the stove. I'm going to heat the wire up as well. Okay, we got a shot. Sort of want to act a little bit quick. Put it in there. And then push. Push and hold it shut. I have to push the pliers a little bit. I'm going to hold it. You actually feel the plastic itself relaxing on the inside, like it's just falling into place. It's under tension from me squeezing it, but then as the sinker starts to melt the plastic around it, it just starts to become its own little mold inside. Might have to do it one more time. Yep, one more time. So it's uh, not staying as open as it was. I don't know if you can pick that up. See how it started to melt its own little pocket in there? That's still really hot. Shouldn't need to do a third time, I don't think. Yeah, that's starting to actually close on itself too, that's good. Hook points are in the same spot as well, which is good. Okay. You can start to see that the sink actually wants to stay. It's good. Very good. All right. So now we're going to start working on closing that up. Okay. So now that we've got it, yeah, just sitting in there. Just going to heat the um, blade up as well. Now you could use like an old butter knife or something like that. It's good. All right. So we get our lure. You want to start to hot. You want to hold it closed, and then just run that blade like that. It should start to close up as you go along. Oh, I just lost my grip a bit there. Pull it down as you go. See, it wants to hold itself shut, but we're just going to keep going a bit more. You might have to melt a little bit more. You actually get some residue on the um, on the blade, which is not a bad thing because you can reheat that itself and just close up a bit of the rest. Use it a bit of, as a glue. Definitely be doing it in this in a bit of a ventilated area because you will get a bit of it smelling. Don't do it in your kitchen. And it's closing. Give it a second to cool down. So now it's almost completely closed and then just run it flat like you're spreading butter, butter on toast. Set it up again. See a stove would be a lot much faster. You can just dip it on and off the stove or while you're not using it, have it resting it on the flame. I just want to spread it like you're spreading butter on toast. Makes the bottom nice and flat, seamless. Just up here, I've actually got a little bit of a rip, but that's fine. We'll put that, dip it in there, close, close with your fingertips over the blade. Now I'm doing it a lot slower than what I normally would. I've had this well and truly done by now. There's a rip there. Put the blade in, close over the blade, and as you're holding it closed, just remove the blade. Just give it a second, let it cool. There we go, now it's sealed. It's closed, everything's closed. Beautiful. There we have it, that's in there sealed. Ready to fish, and just so you can see in the light, got that lead sitting in there nicely, and it's home. It's not 
kinked in any way. Just gonna do those last couple mods that I do to make this a complete lure. Right on here, I've just got um, some twin hooks, some really fierce brutals, and uh, what size do I go? I'll go with two O because I'm probably just dedicating this to a big bait. Uh, actually, no, I'll go one O. Uh, one -oh. Now these hooks, are dead set, my all-time favourite. There's a few things. There's a lot of things you could talk about a hook, but people might think oh, it's super fine gauge. But if you have a proper look at it, just the cosmetics of it and just the specifications, like how it is, it's proper welded eye for starters. Teflon. It's super sticky and very sharp. Now they. Actually, their hook point isn't just a perfect U shape. It actually curls around and then goes straight. And it's on a couple of degrees in. What that does is help with the driving power and it's stronger, so it's less likely to open. Um, yeah, the ultra sticky sharp as well, like out the packet. I don't need any playing. And I don't, I personally don't like curve points because if it goes in a fish's mouth and it's on its way out, a curve point pointing down can actually shine away from any pieces of skin on the inside of the mouth and it can come straight out whereas this if it's gone straight straight point it can bury straight in to straight in but if the hook point was a little bit away you pretty much just going to be could be missing fish so it might not be a be all end all but it's just something that i prefer not to um, and yeah, let's get some split ring pliers I actually don't mind the hooks on the mag drafts themselves, but just like peace of mind, if I was in a pinch, I wouldn't care. I'd actually rate them. I actually don't mind them. If you're dedicating this to a big bait, like a big fish, sorry, you could probably upsize the treble. I've run a two hour on this a fair bit and never had a drama on big fish. Especially in fish over 120, no bombers. This in there. Larger splitty for the head. Okay. Yeah. Just get a large split ring for the head just to finish it off. Just run on the uh, shout heavy split rings. Now this hook will cop a lot, as in it doesn't have the free range as much as the fish, uh, the hook and the swivel down the bottom. So when the fish rolling and carrying on, maybe in the if fish is already in the net, um, it can just keep spinning. But the top hook, yeah, pretty limited. So if something's going to let go, it's definitely going to be the split ring. So we want to try and do. Either got a heavier split ring. Just to give you that extra chance, but shouldn't happen while it's out in the water. Should only ever happen while it's already in the net. So, so I'm gonna do that. It's as you can see these uh, the Ruji Twin Brutals, absolute deadly. Very similar to the treble itself with a curved in point, slightly heavier gauge, and they've actually got a tiny offset on the um, eye of the hook, which um, and the camera can see that. It's actually got a bit of an offset and just heat shrink so it's made to sit on top of the head of the lure. So I'm gonna do is just pinch that through there, through the two of them. It's on there, and then now just seeing the way they're set up. So actually and I want the hooks, the um, the points actually facing up. Yeah, 
Oops. Good stuff. Here we go, sitting up on top. Probably could have run a 1 0 on the top, but that's cool. So that's sitting there. Um, honestly, if the magnet fell, uh, falls out or whatever in the mag draft, it doesn't phase me whatsoever. So that's that one there. It's pretty much a remake of the veteran. You can see a brand new one. You can see that one's been absolutely ripped to shreds. And it's actually funny, the smaller fish do a lot more damage than the bigger fish. Um, just because they like can grab it through the body, whereas the big fish just engulfs it the whole way. That's why there's a lot of chafe around the head. Um, so, and also what I do, I did do is um, with the plastics themselves, With the plastics themselves, I've had this for probably three or four months now, but it's sort of faded. Is um, I just write down what they are. I know this one was one and a half, one and a half ounce, and this one we just put in. We just put in one ounce of lead, so. This one's a little bit lighter, so we just go one point one point oh. Then I'm gonna chuck it in here, chuck it back in the original packaging. Just so they find their own boxes back again. I'll just go. Text is running a bit low, but eight inch W for white back. Shad. Um, and then we just take note. So one ounce. I put I N T for internal. Um, and then also what did I do to achieve that thing? So I've just gone so size three Size three Sinker in there. So now that's done ready to go in my box so We've got a few there This one actually belongs in here So that's it. So now I've got it all labelled, everything on there. So when I know it come tournament time or even just uh, going through my stuff, I know exactly what is what. Um, and have backups again. These are the these are the trebles. If you those people that are asking, um, those the rings. And um, obviously the mag drafts themselves. Um, you can change the sw swivel out if you wanted to, but I don't see the need to, but just uh, probably just the ring and definitely the treble and the addition of this hook here has done enough to prove itself. It needs to be on every big soft plastic swim bait that I run. So it's definitely earned its place. So that's it guys, there you have it. I've rigged the uh, 8 inch mag draft I've done a fair few on the 10s as well um, you probably have to go north of 1 ounce to do some sort of effect because they are such a heavier lure um, you just need to magnify the amount that you put in there so you're probably looking at north of 1 ounce um, probably pushing 2 and also you've got that much more room in the bait itself you can jam a lot more up there um, uh, now but I've realised with the 1 ounce and the 8 inch mag draft on a Pretty standard cast and a slow roll. You're already reaching down that two and a half to three meter mark just on a steady wind um, and just and run a fluoro. Braid, you run a bit higher because it catches or has a bit of air in the braid and actually wants to, wants to lift. So one thing I was gonna say is you do the big cast, lure sinks down, lure sinks down, you get a big belly in your line back towards the boat. But when you start to wind, your lure actually wanna lift and follow the line back. But running fluoro, 
because it's denser, it wants to sink. So if you think about it, when fly fishermen, when they're running a, a tippet or a leader of um, a fluoro, or, um, it helps the line sink so it lays flatter. So if you were to cast, hits the water, sinks, you're pretty much going to run up to the boat. And if you actually slowly retrieve down the end, you can make it run horizontal and then up to the boat. So that plays, that plays a big deal. Um, but again, uh, the one ounce I found to run two and a half to three meters on a big cast and a slow roll. And the uh, 10 inch, you can actually get down um, with about one and a half ounce, you can actually punch down to four meters on the on a big cast. So in this one, I've actually got um, one and a half ounces of lead in it. Um, and that's here running a big 2.0 treble on there and a big 2.0 um, twin hook on the head. So that, that's, a, that's a big bait there. I'll just show you in comparison. That's the two of them there, so you've got an 8 and a 10. Uh, yeah, anyway, I've got half a dozen more to go. <laughs> I'll do a lot, I'm doing one a lot quicker, but just for the sake of the video, I'm giving you guys a bit more of a step by step. Um, that's how I do it. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope this is a bit of a help. Again, just experiment, play with things. That's how I came up with this sort of um, technique or this little set up we've got going i've been running it probably for about a year and a bit now so it's um proven itself and i really like it I, i've never lost a lead out of one i've never been, had one um lost a fish because of the chin weight or just nothing and even then casting it and never having it fouled up um also just quickly you might be worried about that that hook up on top of the head there that swinging hook don't need to pin that down whatsoever. Just leave it as is. Tie your line up to the top. Tie your line up to the top there. And um, just leave that one free swing. You can pin it down if you want to, but I don't see the need to. Uh, I did it at the start and it just started to get annoying, but um, no, no need. Just as is. So, anyway, guys, signing out from the kitchen. <laughs> Alright, guys, take care. Thank you for watching. Another episode of Fishing with the Captain.